Social work really comes from a bit of a medical model where you look for what's unhealthy and try to figure out how to fix it. And the whole coaching movement is about how to find out what's healthy and what's, what's working right. Uh, and rather than looking for the problems, really looking for the strengths and looking for the ways to take people and organizations that are already good and and just um, help them to be freed up to be even better. So it's, it's a real different mindset. It's something that's been very powerful to me as I was coached, and it's something that I'm finding powerful um, when I speak to other people. So uh, where are you going to be doing your medical study? Part of the issue that um, that I'm trying to work out right now actually is the school itself. Um, there, I, I should preface by saying I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, there are no rabbinical schools down here. My parents are both in their 70s, so the idea of um, leaving to go somewhere else for five years, six years, however long, especially since I'm pushing 30, um, was a little bit uh, uncomfortable for me. So I have been looking into some alternative programs. There are advantages, there are disadvantages, um, there are a lot of issues that I, I need to work out with that. And so that's where, um, that's where really I feel like I need uh, some help and uh, some guidance. What, what does being a rabbi in, in, in your vision and, and in your uh, imagination of what could be, uh, what is having that name that title rabbi in front of your name going to add, uh, where will it add value to whatever journeys it is you're going on, because that probably will, will help in terms of your determination of which program is likely to give you what you need uh, for your life. Punctora, as an organization, is going to continue to evolve. It's going to move into different directions. Um, I see it as uh, professional development in order to uh, help the organization grow into new directions. Um, it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time because I feel like the role of rabbi and where I would like to be is something that's geared towards chaplaincy. Excellent. So, so let, me, let me take what I've heard and I want to try to um, package it a little bit uh, and, and see if we can move on. Because at, at some point, uh, you and I talked about what you would want to get out of a coaching experience, you know, whether it's you know, this, you know, short 30, 45 minutes coaching experience, or if you ever decided you were going to do it, um, you know, in a longer term. And you identified a few what I'll call domains. Um, I think, you know, in our lives, we have different domains, areas that we want to work on, areas that we want to really improve and fine tune. Those can be around health. They can be around fitness. They can be around relationships. Uh, our emotional situation, our professional situation, um, spiritual, um, and there's any number of different domains that we live in that we're, we're working on simultaneously. What you've expressed to me, and this is obviously unrehearsed, um, what I heard you saying is that this whole journey, and I really want to use the word journey because I think life is a journey, um, for you, your rabbinic vision or your rabbinic goals really go in two different directions. One I heard you say is uh, it's a business decision. It's really how do I add value to my business by having a perceived legitimacy of this title and of the training that goes with it. The other I heard you say was how do I take that role of rabbi and in much the way that, that I'm trying to do with you, how do I use the background, the values, the training, the ideals of being a rabbi to help add value to lives of other people? I would look at a kind of assessment with four columns running right in front of us. Uh, one is what your current situation is. You can just write current at the top of the column. The second one would be steps, which we'll talk about actually at the end. The third would be ideal. And the fourth would be, I'll just call it components. Now, here's, here's what I'm looking for and what I'm suggesting. 
if your journey and the goals you want to achieve are primarily, and we're, we're going to frame it around the rabbinic training because that's that's an area that you are working on and want to be working on. Um, and if we put that on rabbinic and maybe also uh, or, or really subdivided between for what I'll call professional um, and business, or maybe business and spiritual. Business and spiritual may actually be a better way to frame that. Now, if you were to look at business running across as, as sort of a row and spiritual running across as a row, um, and now you've got a little grid in front of you, if you were to use, and it doesn't really matter what you use, whether you use a 1 to 10 scale or whether you use a 4 star scale, um, if you were to take either of those domains, the business and the spiritual, and go into that third column, the ideal, that ideal is going to be either that 4 star or that number 10, right? That's where down the road you want this journey to result in a life that's a 4 star life. But if you were to look at both the business row cutting across and the spiritual row cutting across, what would be the 1 to 10 value for where you are right now at this point in your life in those two domains? So I would say that in terms of business, I feel like I'm at maybe a... Three, okay, and then for spiritual, I'm at a nine. Interesting. Okay, good. So now we're going to do a little bit of a gap analysis, um, and I'm going to look at the business especially because that, that's a big gap from a three to a ten. So clearly, there are some components which is going into that fourth column that you feel are missing. That in your idealized what would it take to move from a 3 to a 10? Um, there are some things that you want to get to. And, I don't, and you may not have actually thought about them or articulated, that, or articulated them carefully. But could you brainstorm on a few of what, or even if you wanted to close your eyes and visualize it, um, whatever is more comfortable for you, what would be the components of that number 10 in business? One of the things, definitely, is a sense of um, knowing how to prioritize what I need educationally in mm -hmm. order to meet the goals of Punctora and One Shoal from a business community perspective. I guess maybe it's, it's kind of like a fear of, um, you know, I'll be at some conference or I'll be, you know, in some class or something like that and someone will ask me, hey, Rabbi, what about blah, blah, blah? And I won't have an answer and I'll be like, you know, uh, unable to really feel that sense of, you know, sort of being the type of leader that I want to be. So, okay. So, so, so what, I'm, what I'm hearing then is that one thing that would put you at a number 10 on the business end of things is feeling that you are able to present yourself in a way that it, that conveys legitimacy and that legitimacy includes what you know, uh, what you've learned, what's important to you, what's important to Pontora as a nonprofit business. Correct, definitely. I mean, I know that, you know, because we are Punctora and because we're a very unique community, there's always going to be people who are questioning legitimacy. I mean, there's people who question the legitimacy of the most mainstream organizations that exist or the, or, or the most mainstream people. Uh, so you can never get away from judgmental people or critical people or whatever the case is. But I, I would like to be able to prevent that from flowing into our organization because we're very good at sort of pushing that negativity out and I don't want to put more net pour of that me negativity in. Right. And, right. And at the same time, part of this journey and even this conversation is to push some of that negativity out as well and to, 
to get you towards really being able to articulate and you know, even to visualize clearly what that number 10 place looks like. Now, okay, so now we've done column one, column three, and column four. So the column we haven't done is the second column. So knowing and beginning, and I think, uh, Patrick, I think you're just beginning to articulate what that number 10 looks like, and probably that's something that will take place not over a day or a week or a month, but over several years. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to be in a coaching relationship. It means that you want to be learning certain tools that help you to organize what that journey looks like. Um, so I'm going to say something rabbi to rabbinical student, and that is that it is very easy in any academic situation, whether it's a secular degree, rabbinic degree, what have you, it's very easy to get sucked into the stream um, as opposed to steering the ship. Um, and, and you have the right as a human being, as an adult, as an intelligent adult, and as someone who is experiencing some success in the work you've been doing, you have the right to say to a program and to a process, this is what I need, this is the learning that I want, and yes, I understand that you, the institution or the rabbi or the whoever it is that's conveying this um, ordination, I understand you have your needs and your demands, but I need you to also respect and understand my needs. And, and I think that's a perfectly legitimate thing to say, um, because again, it, it's ultimately your life, and you know what the number 10 looks like for you. The dean student doesn't. 